I have a 2012 Mercedes GLK 350 4 Matic, all-wheel drive. I'm gonna do an oil change on it. First thing you wanna do is pop your hood release and open your hood. The hood release is above your left foot. The little lever over there by the uh, parking brake foot. Pull it down, the hood releases it. Get your hood up. Make sure your hood supports are good so the hood stays up on you and doesn't fall down and hit you in the head. First thing you want to do is get this front cover on top of the engine cover. Pull up on in this corner and pull up on this corner. Got it? Go over here and pull up on that one. Go over here and pull up on that one. And you can pull the whole thing up. Got some clips, okay? And he's just got little ball studs. Going to some little thingies down here. You can put some silk light on them. Help installation next time. Hopefully you got your cartridge filter already for it. And this is where your oil filter is. This is your washer solvent. And that's your antifreeze. And over here is your brake fluid. Brake fluid looks good. Fill up your washer solvent, open it up, fill it up until it comes up to the top. Antifreeze looks good. It's got a blue antifreeze in it, so I can see it. That's good. And then you want to do is you want to look at your serpentine belt. This is the belt part, the rib part. See if there's any cracks in it. Dryness looks good. Let's see no abnormal wear. Your power steering fluid is down here. It's got a cap. You just turn it and pull it up. Check it, make sure it's on a little bit. Put it back in there. Turn it, turn it till it stops. It's good. Next, you want to remove your oil filter. What I'll use is a, a band clamp type. I have luck with those. I don't like you, I don't have the special tool that goes over it. So, but I'll use a band steel clamp, okay? I tried using my band steel clamp, but it keeps on bumping loose on me. So I got my big channel locks. I'm relying upon the, the teeth to turn it, not the squeeziness of it, because I don't want to squeeze it too tight and break it. So, get a good grip on it and turn it loose. And that worked. I don't recommend the other type of oil filter wrench on it. I'll show you. This type, because this one's got some small areas where it's going to be squeezing at, and it might pinch and crack your filter housing. See, and this one has a bunch more grips, and I'm just relying upon the grips, not the squeeziness of it, but the teeth to turn it, okay? And it worked. So I'll take this off. Now that I got it loose, I can turn it by hand. And when you get it totally loose, you want to get yourself a little drain pan and get it close to it as possible so you don't drip all over the engine. So here we go. I got me a pan. Pin it up shake it as I'm going up a little bit okay see how that's dripping drip boop put it in here okay can get the filter grab the filter shake it as you're coming out a little bit keep above it see it dripping a little bit straighten her out put her in there remove it Put it on your bench and get your new filter and match it up. Okay, got my new filter. Compared it. Looks pretty good. There's my housing. Got an O-ring here and two O-rings, one here and one there. They're exactly the same size. Here's my kit O-rings. And 
don't see nothing else. All right, so we'll use this one, and we'll use this one and this one. Get yourself a little screwdriver, like a pocket screwdriver, and take the seals off and put some new ones on, and lube them up with some oil or some seal glide. Get my new O-rings on. Get them in the proper groove. Okay. No right or wrong on the filter. Get it on there. Push it down. Okay. Now it's ready to go in. All right. Bring it on over. Put it in there. And tighten it as far as you can. Now you can use your band steel clamp or you can use your vice grips. Or if you have a special tool, use your special tool. By changing the filter first, you're taking this whole unit out of there and it allows it, the oil filter to drain because you took that whole piece out because it has those two O-rings on the bottom. They're sticking in there and that'll allow it, keeps it holding oil inside here. So you take this one out first, the oil filter out, and that allows the oil filter housing to drain. So then you're changing that oil inside of there. Instead of draining the oil first and then doing this, and then this dirty oil goes and drains into your new fresh oil, okay? Okay. So that's done. So now what you gotta do is jack it up. If you're gonna drive it on some ramps and raise it up in the air, that's cool. That's good. If you're gonna jack it with a jack, you have to do it underneath the, the lower control arms or do it underneath the, the mounting pads on the sides. I'll show you those. These are really hard to lift with a rack sometimes because the arm, the arm pads don't match the pads on the vehicle because they're either too long or too short. So I have to use just my arms with a two by six stuck in there. I can use the back ones, but I can't use the front ones. Okay, we'll get it raised up and uh, we'll get the oil draining. Right underneath here is a black pad, rubber pad, and that's what you're supposed to jack it up on. Can't really see them, but that's where they're at. A little bit of one right there. I got it on the back ones. Okay. If you're gonna do it with uh, the jack on the front on the control arm, it's not a very big control arm, it's only an aluminum, it will bend. So I don't recommend that. So make sure you use your pads on the sides. Okay. So now we gotta remove the under panel. It's got eight millimeter screws all the way around it. Get the screws out and there should be some retainers to kind of like hold it up so you can grab it and pull it out okay so we're going to take those screws out and see where we're at from there i removed the eight screws and the panel just comes right down there's nothing to hold it up in there so you can get the screws started i guess that's only on some other models so all right Drain plug is on the driver's side. It's right here, it's a 13 millimeter. Counterclockwise to loosen it. So you wanna loosen it, take it out and get your drain pan on it and catch the fluid. This holds seven and a half quarts. So it's gonna be quite a bit coming out. Doesn't have a dipstick far as I know, and it uses a sensor. So let it drain. So barely dripping or just a little fine stream and get tired of waiting. So, okay. Drain plug, it's pretty long. So it's got a microscopic drain plug gasket on it. It's copper. If you have a new one, replace it. Sometimes the filters come with them, but this one didn't. So I'm gonna check my stock and see if I got a new drain plug gasket. So just so you know, it has a drain plug gasket so make sure you put it back up there with a drain plug gasket. If you can't find a drain plug gasket, probably stuck to the oil pan, 
or it fell into your drain pan or possibly fell on the floor. But it does have a gasket. Okay. Okay, now we're done to the uh, fine stream. You can let it sit here and drain all day like that. Or you can just say heck with it. I'm done, so I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna put my drain plug in, okay? I'll get me a new gasket for next time. I don't have one. Okay, got my drain plug in with my gasket and I tightened it. I'd say it's about 25 foot pounds. You better check from the factory specs. I don't know, just give me an idea. I change oil a lot so I kind of know how to tighten them up. It's an oil, it's an aluminum pan. So you don't want to over tighten it and strip it. But I always, I just give them a little nice pull. Okay. Since you're under here, you want to check out your suspension and uh, see if there's anything loose, pull on, twist them. This is like the Chrysler design. It's damn, damn nah or something like that. These bushings in here go bad. So, but these are okay. These look good. So you look up in there so you can see any cracks or any rust. Any rust coming out of your boots. No rust, no cracks in my bushings. So everything looks good. The ride's good, has no uh, noises when you hit small bumps. So everything looks good. Like check out your struts, check out your CV joints. Make sure the boots don't have no fluid leaking, grease coming out of them. Make sure you have no axle seals leaking, no fluid coming out anywhere. Everything looks good. You can go to the back and do the same thing to the back. You can look at your boots in there. And the boot there. These are plastic boots. The inner ones are more plastic also. But no, no grease leaks. No oil leaks. Check out your shocks. Make sure there ain't no oil on them. If there's oil on them, they'll be collecting dirt. If they got, if they got oil on them collecting dirt, then they're bad. Okay? So now I'm going to put my under panel back up. And then we're good. And then we'll lower it down. And make sure you check your tire pressure on your way down. Make sure you put your under panel back up. And your eight screws. And don't over tighten your screws. You'll strip them out. Because there's going to be a little metal... Um, quick nuts up up there okay i'm gonna lower it down and then i'm gonna check my tire pressure and then when i check my tire pressure and i'm all done with that then i'm gonna lower it all the way down and put my oil in also you want to check your front suspension tie rod for looseness pull on a tire pull on this side and push on this side right to left boom 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 you know same thing on the bottom push in push out Got any wheel bearing play, okay, or ball joint play. Push up on them. See if you got any play in your tire pushing it up, okay? It all feels tight and right and left, and you're good. Here's your oil cap. Turn it. Bring it off. Don't turn it over on that because it drips. See how it's dripping? Pull it up. Turn it upside down. Get out of there. I live in the Chicago area. According to your owner's manual, you put the right amount, amount uh, right recommended fluid in it by your area temperatures. I'm in Chicago area, so I'm gonna use 530 synthetic. Okay, I'm gonna get that going. According to the owner's manual, this takes 7.4 quarts. So I put seven and a half quarts in it. Okay, I get seven and a half quarts in it. 530 so now I'm gonna put my oil cap back on so I'm gonna wipe this off okay and I want to wipe off my cap make sure it doesn't have no uh, dirt all around it like this one did have it had a lot of dirt around it put it on there like that turn it that's good 
Go around, wipe off all your little drips that you got here and there. And then you'll want to uh, put your little panel on. Remember it, clip, clip, ball stud, ball stud. Put some little bit of seal glide on there, some grease, so it slips in there nicely. And then you start it up, and uh, if it's incorrect fluid level, the computer will tell you on the dash that you have incorrect fluid level. But you can also go on in the dash to check your fluid level. You can tell you how much as well is in there. But you have to go through the owner's manual and go through the procedure to find that. And I'm not gonna, I don't have the time for that. So, but I got the right amount of fluid in it according to capacities. And that's what I'm gonna go with. So there you go. Good luck.